Hello Vikings and welcome back to another episode here on the Valheim Guide. This of course being episode 4, but as you can see around you guys, some things have changed in this world and we did a lot of this on stream. So I did a stream on YouTube where we did a Valheim uh, guide stream and I'll be doing them like on YouTube and also sometimes on Twitch. So if you want to follow my Twitch uh, so you get notified when I'm going live on there, then you can uh, check out the link in my description or if you want to watch the YouTube ones, you can just subscribe and you'll get notified there. Or if you want to be across everything, then in my Discord, link in the description uh, you can join the notification squad and get a notification every time i go live every time i post a video all that good stuff so just very quickly uh we built this little base right here um so a lot of the flattening work and stuff i did off camera now what i'm going to do is i realized during the stream that when we're making this base up it's actually going to take a little while to do and then once it's done i'm going to go and do like a full guide on how to build a base and we're going to talk about everything including like how to flatten land properly things you might want to have in your base and uh, then you guys will have the options and stuff as to how you want to proceed but today we're going to be talking about certain cores. i have some like good reasons for that but basically today is going to be a burial chamber guide because that's of course where we get ourselves these certain cores from now the reason that we want those so we can have some kilns and smelters around here so that our base can be used as a bit of a work area as well to develop our stuff around the game and also we want portals because you get a huge jump in efficiency once you've got portals in the game and you can teleport to and from different places so obviously that's gonna be our better way of like progressing through the world uh, the other thing that we will get is uh, the Elder location. You get the Elder location by finding runestones in burial chambers. I'm hoping to show you that later on in this episode. Uh, well, I will. I, I just hope it doesn't take me too long because it can be a little bit tricky, but we'll see. Um, and then uh, also, once we've got the Elder location, we'll be able to fight him because he's not that tough. We're, we're almost ready to fight him, right? We're almost there. And once we've done that, then we get the Elder ability, which means we can chop down wood a lot faster. So that is why I want to do it that way to be more efficient in building up our base area. Uh, just to say during the stream as well, we did get a ton of of copper so i need to go and get a load of tin we also got a load of stone as well so we're actually progressing quite nicely through the world and i am very excited for this episode also when we find the elder location if we go and check that out we have a chance of finding the trader because usually the elder location is in a different black forest away from the starting island right so if they like to sail across to it and we have a chance of finding that trader which is awesome if we can find the trader get the weight belt again increasing that efficiency that's amazing uh, also we can start fishing which is a great source of food and i look forward to doing a fishing guide later on in this series uh, and plus we get a Santa hat, which everybody wants, right? We all want a Santa hat. So that's my reasons for this, guys. Let's jump into the full burial chamber, guys. So before you head off to the burial chambers, let's talk a little bit about things you should take with you. And we're going to start with food, as that is an important one. So these three foods here are the ones I like to take. Now, first of all, the boar and the honey, that can all be farmed. So really, it's a good choice of food because you can just get basically an infinite amount of it. As for the deer meat, it's a little bit more tricky to get. But once you get to the stage of the game where you no longer need it, you, you don't have to worry about it so much, obviously. And so at this early stage i think it's quite useful uh, also this will give us a nice range of hp and stamina like a good balance of both so i think it's important to have that when you're doing the burial chambers and that's the ones i like to say but of course take whatever foods suit your play style the best uh, then you'll need a shield and i like to take the tower shield i'm going to show you why when we get to the chamber later on um, but it's very useful for basically defending particularly against multiple enemies and it does block a lot of damage but take any shield you like just make sure you do take one uh, you'll also want some armor. I've got a couple of bits of troll armor right now. Uh, again, if you are not as good at combat, you're a bit new to this game, you might want to take some more armor with you. Uh, but honestly, this should be fine. It's not that difficult to raid them. It's more about just being careful that you don't die in the heat of the moment. Uh, so then weapons highly recommend the stag breaker like really really recommend it especially if you're new to the game but even if you're not i really think you should take this with you um it's it's a really useful weapon the, the stag breaker um and you're going to see why later on in this video but yeah i highly recommend that you take that with you um, as for uh, other weapons, I would say a blunt weapon's always good, so we've got a level 2 club here, which is very good, and you should always take a bow with you and a decent amount of arrows, because uh, the ranged attacks are going to be useful in certain circumstances. I also like to take some materials to make a fireplace, and again, you'll see why that is later on. And you can, if you want, take a torch with you, because they get pretty dark in there, and this will help you to sort of see, you know, where you're going, as, as you'd expect from a torch. Uh, now, the other thing to say is to make sure that you actually uh, take out of your inventory anything you don't need. So, for example, I'm probably not going to need my stone axe in there. I'm probably not going to need my pickaxe in there. We're going to be picking up a lot of loot items, so we want to make sure that we're only taking things that we actually need when we're in the chamber, and save the rest of the space and the weight for all the goodies that we get while we're raiding. So, just talking about a couple recipes for things I spoke about there, and let's start with the 
Stag Breaker. As you can see, this will require a level 2 workbench, a 20 core wood, uh, 5 deer trophy, and 2 leather scraps. So, obviously, uh, deer trophy get by killing deer, scraps from killing boar, the core wood from cutting down the pine trees, which I showed in the previous episode. If I walk past a pine tree later, I'll show you that. But actually, getting core wood is also how you unlock the Stag Breaker recipe in the first place. Of course, to upgrade your workbench, you just need to add to it one of these things, either the chopping block or the tanning rack. You see the uh, ingredients for each of them there. So the chopping block, a lot easier to make, and uh, that's my chopping block there. So then you can make the stag breaker up there, and uh, the wood tower shield, Obviously, you can choose the style here of it, and the wooden shield. This is probably where you're at at this stage of the game. Uh, these two shield options, and these are the recipes for them. And again, make whichever one suits your playstyle the best. Uh, most of the other stuff is pretty self-explanatory. One thing I will say is I did upgrade my crude bow to level 2, and uh, I do recommend that you do this early on in the game when you are able to do so, as it is quite a useful weapon. So, the next thing is uh, where are you going to find yourself a burial chamber? Well, they can, of course, be found in the black forest biomes. You can see different biomes on your map by hovering over, and it shows you in the top right of the screen what the biome is now each one of my bc notifications here is a burial chamber which is why i always say you should make sure that you note these things when you find them so we're going to head off to these now um if you haven't found them yet, you're just going to need to explore Black Forest until you do find them. Uh, they can be a little tricky to find sometimes, but at the same time, if you wander around a Black Forest for long enough, you'll definitely stumble across a few of them. And I'm going to show you the different types right now as well to show you what you need to look out for. So the burial chambers are all pretty much the same inside in that they all randomly generate in the same way, but from the outside, they look different. This is the first example of a burial chamber that you will see. And uh, basically, this is probably the easiest one that you will find because it does stand out a bit. It's got to be in a bit of a clearing and it's kind of obvious with the uh, the formation of the rocks and stuff there but if we compare it to this one this is the second type of barrel chain that you'll see you can see how these can be a lot more easily hidden in the rocks particularly if you're approaching it from the opposite direction uh, it just looks like rock from there so you do have to really be careful one of the dead giveaways that there is a burial chamber nearby is if you uh, see skeletons if you see skeletons there's a high probability not not like 100 but a high chance that there will be a burial chamber somewhere nearby the other thing you can do is when huge in uh, when you first like get near a burial chamber huge will land on it and uh, as long as you don't talk to him when he lands on it he'll keep doing that at every burial chamber so that can be like a little notification she's like oh hey uh, he's coming to land perhaps there's a burial chamber here and then you can go and check it out a couple final points before you set off guys number one is to make sure that you go and repair all of your stuff before you set off that's just good common sense have full durability of everything number two is if it's going to be nighttime soon you might want to wait and then sleep and then head off in the morning the black forest can be very tricky at night time and of course you don't want to die when you're doing this trip uh, the final thing is to get yourself a rested buff now if you sleep of course you'll get the rested buff uh, at that time if not then you might just want to sit down next to a fire somewhere and uh, wait until your rested buff is at full and obviously if you've got the arc through ability that's going to be very useful as well to save you time getting to and from the black forest and uh, when you're exploring those burial chambers so this right here is one type of burial chamber now when you approach it there will be skeletons out side and of course gradles and things might be coming at you so you can fight them if you want but i'm just going to show you really quickly as well if you were to just simply run in to the burial chamber they will not follow you in so if you're in a bit of trouble you can always run in to get yourself safe so once inside what i like to do is go ahead and place down a fireplace just like this and this will light up the whole area and show us any mobs that might be here now it looks like we might be okay no there's a skeleton here okay good i wanted you to come come out okay the reason i want them to come out is i want to show you something this right here is your little safe haven they cannot run up on top of here and neither can you you have to jump to get up onto this ledge which means you're nice and safe here now at this point you could just shoot them with uh, a bow if you wanted to or just go give them some hits and just make sure you step back after you hit them and they're not able to get you which is pretty cool as you can see though the club does pretty good damage against the skeletons i'm going to look at other ways you can fight skeletons in a second as well but for now let's just clear these guys out with our club and uh, then the lobby area is nice and clear. So when you're exploring the barrel chambers, what I recommend is that you wield a shield and a melee weapon. However, I'm going to wield a shield and a torch just because it uh, gets a bit dark here and I want to try and make this as visual as I can for you guys to see the, the best result. Now, I recommend that you always go in the same direction. So for example, I always go left when I get into these things. Now, what that means is that then I know how to get out, right? I always have to head right to get back out. So it just makes things easier. Now with the doors, one thing you can do is just open and close them straight away. And that way you will then know what's behind them, right? If there's like any mobs behind them or whatever else. It's a little bit overkill, but if you're new to the game and you want to be very cautious, then that's a good way to do it. When you come to a T-junction like this, I recommend that you are blocking and you just sort of look one way and then the other. And then you know they're both are safe and boom, we're going to go left again because that's our rule and head through. And this is how you can do this and play reasonably safely. Okay, behind this next door is something I was hoping I would find and that is a spawner. As you can see there, the purpleness 
that is a spawner. Now this is when the stag breaker really comes into its own because not only is it going to do AOE damage to all the mobs in there, but it's also going to damage the spawner. So let's go ahead and wield that stag breaker, open the door and then come in and give a massive hit right onto the spawner. And as you see here, we are hurting the skeletons and we've also destroyed the spawner and boom, just like that, it's all gone. So let's go ahead and wield this so you guys can see a bit better. Oh, and we got a certain course there, fantastic. Uh, so yeah, uh, these spawners will spawn more and more skeletons. So getting rid of them is a little bit of a priority really because once that's gone, then you just have to kill the skeletons that are there and you'll be good. Uh, so, certain cores, this is basically what we are here for. And this is an example of a room where you will find the certain cores. And we also have a chest here. Now this I think is gonna make quite a nice picture for a thumbnail. So let me just get a little picture of that and then we'll come back to the video. Okay, thumbnail picture done. <laughs> so we're going to pick up the certainly cores, and we've got a couple there, which is very good. You should also check the floor. See here, we've got some amber just under here like this, and sometimes you can find other things as well. Looks like that might be it for now. And then in the... Oh, the certain core. <laughs> I nearly missed that one in the corner. See, you've got to be careful of these things, guys. Uh, and then in the chest, this is pretty standard sort of loot that you'll get with coins and treasure, some arrows in there and stuff like that. So that's a really good first room, actually, and we're pretty happy with that. So I'm going to wield my shield and head back through and see what else we can find. And one thing you will find is a lot of these yellow mushrooms along the way. Do pick them all up. They are going to be useful to you throughout the game. And uh, they can actually be used as food as well. If you've got to take food, you'll see there they will give you 10 health and 30 stamina. So you can eat them if you've got to bring food with you or if you run out. Uh, just to say as well, the yellow mushrooms will respawn in burial chambers. So make sure you keep a note of where your burial chambers are. And then you can always come back and get more yellow mushrooms later on in the game if you need them. Okay, so now we come to our next mob. And this is a ghost, as you can see there. Kind of, you couldn't, he was like in front of the door. But he's basically, he's behind this door. Now, if I used to stand breaker and I hit really close to this door you will see that I've done damage to the ghost without even being at danger of this thing attacking me so that is another very useful thing guys about the stag breaker is it can do damage through doors not just the ghost to skeletons and stuff as well so that's awesome let's open the door and let's block with this and let's see are the ghost here hey ghosty and let's uh are we safe in here ish all right I want him to hit me and there you see the damage it does with this tower shield which is why I like the tower shield if you hit it with the torch you see it does do a bit of fire damage to it but it's not doing tons of damage to it, right? So now I'm going to compare that to a club. So unfortunately, it's going to be a little bit darker. And I'll show you the damage that a club does. So let's open this up. Hit him with a club. Okay, reasonable damage with the club. There we go. But my favorite way to fight these is to wield a bow. And just simply open the door and get your bow drawn. Wait for him to come into view and fire at him. But don't miss, okay? If you miss, you're not going to do much damage. That's, that's kind of the rule. But you can see there, we killed him a lot easier using the bow. Now, yes, he was already damaged. But I still find that the bow does a reasonable amount of damage. And often, when they're in a room like this, you can sort of shoot them with your bow and then hide behind here and keep doing this. And I'll try and get an example of this later on. Uh, but it's a reasonably safe way to fight them. So, through here, we've got ourselves one more certainly core by the looks of it. Some rubies and bones and stuff around the floor. Again, this is all very typical loot that you'll find in these burial chambers. And it's why you do need to look around on all the little ledges and on the floor and stuff. Because there's a lot of hidden loot that you will see in these things. Okay, so through this door just down here, we do have a skeleton. You're going to find a lot of skeletons in burial chambers. So, uh, let's have a look at some ways we can fight them. So, he's just down the end here. There he is. Uh, here we go. So again, I'm just going to block with my uh, shield and show you the damage here. So when he hits, he only does a little bit of damage. And this is just a level 1 wooden tower shield, but they are pretty powerful. And when you hit him, you can hit him with a fire. You can see the fire damage does not do a great deal of damage to him. One thing you can do is, again, use your stag breaker. And we can hit just next to when he's next to a door. And look at the damage we did to him there. Fantastic damage. But just to show you as well, let's let this guy come out here a second. See how slow his attacks are? So if he runs up to try and attack us... He set himself on fire. We can very easily get away from them. And blunt weapons are very powerful against them, which is why we use blunt. Now, I'll show you a proper... I've set myself on fire. Aha. <laughs> um, I will show you a proper blunt attack against the skeleton in a second as well, um, because that one there, he had not very much health left. Okay, through this door, we have another ghost. So I'm going to show you what I was talking about before. We can just sort of hide from the ghost, come out and shoot him. There we go. And then he sort of, like, he comes at you. But by the time he gets here, I've landed three hits, four hits. Okay, he's got a hit on me there, which is quite damaging but i killed him there without any real difficulty if you are worried about the damage you're taking 
The best bet is to just use your shield and club him because it still does reasonable damage. But yeah, the bow way is just the way that I like to go with it. So having looted that first burial chamber, this is all of the stuff that we got from it. The eight certain cores here being the big one. As I say, I definitely think that is above average. Um, but here's all the other stuff that we've got. And this is all pretty typical, you know, treasure, feathers, all of that good stuff. Uh, now, I did get through quite a lot of my torch. So I'm actually going to head home and uh, dump all this stuff and get a few more torches so I can show you guys more stuff. Because there is a lot more to see when it comes to burial chambers. There's still some things that I didn't find in this one that I definitely need to show you guys. So when exploring the Black Forest, do keep your eye open for different things, particularly things like this. If we go up here and press E, boom, we've got ourselves the Elder Location. So traditionally, you generally will find the Elder Location in burial chambers on runestones that look just like this, but sometimes you can go ahead and find them on your way. So you definitely want to be looking around as you're uh, looking through the Black Forest. Uh, the other thing you'll see, I believe I saw some up here. Yep, here we go. These are easier to see when it's dark, actually, because they glow. But these thistles right here, you definitely want to pick up thistles. As you see there, we've got a new material in the game, which is fantastic. Um, they will unlock some new recipes for you, which is very, very useful. Uh, new food recipes and stuff like that. The other thing you can see here, I've marked when I found tin. I've marked when I found copper. I highly recommend you mark all this stuff as you will need it later on in the game. And there's blueberries up here, which is fantastic. There's only a couple here. If this was a big batch of blueberries, I would definitely mark that as well so I can come back and get them. Um, so just like before, we're still picking up everything on our way, even though we are focusing on getting to burial chambers. Okay, so here is a great example of just how well hidden a burial chamber can sometimes be. When you first get to the uh, burial chamber area, the, the sort of dead giveaway is when the skeletons are around. If you see skeletons around, there's quite a high chance that there is going to be a burial chamber here somewhere so this one here is hidden by trees and rocks and shrubs so yeah they can be difficult to find guys which is why uh, you do need to really keep a lookout when you get there okay so i was hoping to find a burial chamber like this uh, sometimes you get these cool little areas you can see here we can go down here and explore we can carry on up here and explore so uh, i'm just going to do a little bit of exploring on camera right now and see what we find as we go through here and uh, you know just to show you guys basically things you can expect to find okay this one wasn't overly interesting it kind of led down to a dead end let's go down here though see if there's something a bit more uh, exciting down here potentially uh so it goes down again so you have to really look around these things it can sometimes be a bit tricky to see exactly what's going on there's a door here as well okay before i open that door i just want to check yeah everything here is all safe and good and then through the door Anything of interest? No. But still, <laughs> you guys might find more interesting things on yours. So from our second burial chamber, guys, the loot on the right-hand side here is what we managed to get. And notably, we only got one certain in core. So this is not like unusual. You will sometimes do burial chambers that get you just a few certain cores. I've done quite a lot in my time that got me zero certain cores. So you don't know how many you're going to get and how many burial chambers you're going to have to do. Um, also, I did not find the Elder location yet, so we would still be looking for that if I hadn't found it outside on that other uh, runestone thing that I showed earlier in the video. Uh, but yeah, just giving you guys an idea of what you can expect when raiding these chambers. So I talked about looking out for things when you're exploring the Black Forest, and another thing you should look out for are these things right here. So you've got this barrel and this stool just outside of here. Now, you could just put down um, a workbench and destroy these things to get all the materials from them, but I don't have the materials on me or even an axe to get wood. So I'm just going to quickly smash them open, which is option number two. Probably the stag breaker is best for this, actually. And then I'll show you guys what you get from them. And boom, look at that. All these recipes that we've unlocked there, guys, because of this thing right here, the fine wood that we got from that stool just by smashing it open. So we've unlocked tons of new recipes right there. And if you find uh, a few of these, you can get a little bit of fine wood and uh, build a couple of these smaller fine wood uh, requirement items. Uh, also, I got this stuff here from the barrels. It's worth smashing. You just get a few like goodies from it. Um, but yeah. And then inside these things, you can find different things. This one has a chest in it, so you just want to go in there and loot that. Sometimes there'll be mobs in there and stuff as well, so do be careful. Uh, but yeah, definitely worth mentioning on your Black Forest adventure to keep an eye out for. So here is another burial chamber type that you'll find. Uh, this is actually near the copper mining that I did on stream. Fun fact, guys, when you're mining copper, do mine down like you've seen I've done here underneath where the copper is, as there will be a lot more of the ore underneath as well. Uh, but let's head inside and see what we find in this one. All right, guys, behind this door, as you can see, is a two-star skeleton. Now, these guys are nasty, like real nasty. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my shield. I'm going to let this guy come out. And I'm going to block so you guys can see how much damage he can do to us. Unfortunately, I don't have a fireplace here. I forgot to bring the materials. Come on, dude. Out you come. All right, here he comes. So I'm just going to block and boom. So there you go. Even when I'm fully blocking him, as you see there, I took quite a lot of damage. So you do need to be very careful when you're fighting these guys. Now, I'm up on my little safety ledge here right now, so that's good. And we're going to fight him probably from up here because uh, otherwise he might do a lot of damage to us. As you can see, though, my club is still doing a reasonable amount of damage to him per hit, which is why I really like to bring a club with me as my weapon and uh, why I make the effort to upgrade it to a level 2 club to get that extra damage 
it's really not that difficult to do. Now, his attacks, by the way, if we can get him to come back through here, his attacks are still pretty slow. Like, when he goes to swing at you there, you can still kind of run away from him. But yeah, he is pretty nasty, and you definitely want to be careful. So, now we come to one of my favorite things to find in a barrel chamber. It's quite rare, but it is this room right here. I just think this looks absolutely fantastic. You get loads of certain cores in here. You got the sort of coffin sort of thing in there. You can pick up those skeletal remains. A little bit of, like, outside light even coming in here. We got the chest and stuff. So, this is fantastic. Before I touch this room, I'm definitely just going to go around and grab myself a few thumbnail snaps. But, uh, yeah, so this is a very awesome find when you get this in the uh, burial chambers. All right, guys, so behind this door is something I really wanted to show you guys today because this is a very dangerous mob that you will see sometimes in burial chambers, although it is rare, and that is the rancid remains. My torch just went out. Here we go. And it looks like that. And as you can see, that's very scary, right? Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use the stag breaker, right? We're going to hit near the door, and this is going to be a way of getting a good hit on him, and we killed the other dude, which is very nice. Uh, but now we're going to, uh, let's see, get my, uh, my club and my shield here. And let's eat up some food as well. I'll gain some stamina and uh, some, some health. So I want to let him hit me once just to show you guys the damage this guy does. Because uh, I'm crazy like that. All right. Give me a hit, buddy. Boom. There we go. So there was a big hit. But also you get the poison effect. You see there. And I'm taking extra damage. So that's why this guy is quite a dangerous one. And so fighting him through the door like this, definitely a good way to go. Um, if you can, obviously. Uh, let's just uh, make sure I get some hits with the club as well to show you what a level 2 club does to him in terms of damage. So, if he's having a hit there, we can do a few hits here, and boom. And again, this is why I highly recommend the club, guys. It is a really useful uh, tool, or weapon, I should say, when you're doing these burial chambers. And I'm going to have a go at this evil bone pile spawner thing here. That's that one gone. Very good. Oh, no, it's not. Wait, I better, better get rid of that. Um... Okay, now it's gone. I thought I'd smashed it before, but I hadn't. <laughs> so yeah, just wanted to show that in case you guys bump into one of those things. Uh, they are pretty nasty and can be a little bit dangerous as well. And here we go, guys. We found it, the Elder location. Now, we've already located it because we uh, found that runestone outside of a tower. But this is what you'll see sometimes. Runestones like this within the burial chambers that will show you the Elder location. So I'm really glad that I was able to find one of those today to show you guys. Because, uh, you know, it's just useful for you to know. Oh, hello. Um, let's get in here. So guys, the dad jokes are of course on the way, but I really hope you found today's guide useful. And if you did, please do consider liking and subscribing for more. But for now, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. What is a little ghost's favorite game to play? Hide and shriek. Why couldn't the skeleton eat liver? He didn't have the stomach for it. Where do baby ghosts go during the day? Day scare centers. What do skeletons say as they head out to sea? Bone voyage. What do you call a skeleton who won't work? Lazy bones. How does a French skeleton say hello? Bonjour.